Hello girls, I hope you're staying safe at home. To continue with the ammonia chapter, today we are going to start from the manufacture of ammonia. Ammonia is manufactured in huge quantities in factories so that they are distributed in various places for various uses. And the process by which ammonia is manufactured is known as Haber's process. The reactants used for the manufacture of ammonia are nitrogen which is obtained by fractional distillation of liquid air and hydrogen which is obtained from water gas by the Bosch process or from natural gas and nitrogen and hydrogen are taken in the ratio 1 is to 3 by volume. Now you know nitrogen and hydrogen they react to form ammonia with a lot of heat. So this reaction is an exothermic reaction and this sign tells you that it is a reversible reaction and this reaction remember children it proceeds with a decrease in volume because nitrogen and hydrogen they are forming ammonia so the volume will decrease. Now what are the con uh, conditions? Uh, the temperature optimum the right temperature is 450 to 500 degrees Celsius the pressure is above 200 atmospheres okay and actually what is taken is 250 atmosphere in Haber's process. The catalyst used is finely divided iron so why is the iron finely divided? Uh, divided because for more surface area which increases the efficiency of the catalyst. The promoter used are traces of molybdenum or aluminium oxide. You know the promoter it uh, helps the catalyst to act faster. Now the rate of conversion is about 15% of the reacting gases gets converted to ammonia and the remaining 85% it remains unreacted. Now how is ammonia recovered? Ammonia is separated from the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen by liquefaction because ammonia is liquefied easily as compared to nitrogen and hydrogen gas and by absorbing in water because ammonia is highly soluble in water but nitrogen and hydrogen are only slightly soluble. Okay now moving on to the process of uh, the Haber's process you can see here uh, this is the apparatus you can say used okay so nitrogen is taken from the liquid air one volume and hydrogen by Bosch process three volumes it is put in through here and here and it passes through the compressor the gases are compressed to increase the pressure the pressure taken is 250 uh, atmospheres the gas then moves on to the next chamber which is known as the catalytic chamber. The catalyst used you know is finely divided iron and uh, the promoter aluminum oxide or a little amount of molybdenum is here and the temperature is at 500 degree Celsius and uh, I already told you the pressure is 250 atmospheres. So here is where ammonia is formed. So about 15% of the gases that is nitrogen and hydrogen will react to form ammonia gas. So the gases which comes out from the catalytic chamber are ammonia, unreacted nitrogen and unreacted hydrogen. So as it comes out from the catalytic chamber uh, it passes the cooling chamber okay where the cooling liquid comes in from here and the gases are cooled and liquid ammonia is collected here and the gases nitrogen and hydrogen which do not turn into liquid is recirculated back into the system. So this way when the hot mixture um, goes out the ammonia liquefies first and nitrogen and hydrogen do not liquefy and the nitrogen and hydrogen which are unchanged is recirculated to get more ammonia and by this way when there is recirculation there is an eventual yield of 98% of ammonia and the ammonia produced is stored as liquid under 
pressure. Now you know, we already discussed this, but a quick recap, the reaction is exothermic, gives out a lot of heat. So low temperature is favored. So in the beginning, uh, what happens? You must heat, a lot of heat must be given. The heat which is given out will maintain the temperature later on. So external heating is not required. That means the reactants are only heated in the beginning and uh, the temperature maintained is 450 degree Celsius to 500 degree Celsius. Now there are four volumes of reactants produces two volumes of product. So high pressure favors the formation of ammonia and I already told you the optimum pressure is actually between 200 to 900 atmospheres but in the Haber's process the pressure is maintained at 250 atmospheres and uh, why do we use the catalyst and promoter to speed up the reaction okay the speed of the reaction is improved when a catalyst is used and a promoter is used why to increase the efficiency of the catalyst what is the catalyst used the catalyst used is um, finely divided iron and the promoter the promoter is molybdenum or aluminium oxide okay and um, the purification of nitrogen and hydrogen is very important okay because sometimes nitrogen and hydrogen has impurities like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and traces of sulfur compounds like hydrogen sulfide which poisons the catalyst that is it will not allow the catalyst to do its work. So the removal of these catalytic poisons from the nitrogen and hydrogen is very very essential. Now moving on to the physical properties of ammonia. It is colorless, it has a strong pungent and choking smell okay and it has a slightly bitter taste because it is alkaline in nature uh, ammonia is a non-poisonous gas but if it inhaled it affects the respiratory system and brings tears to the eye it is a very powerful heart stimulant that is the heart will start beating faster and faster and it will cause death if it is inhaled in large quantities the density, it is, uh, the vapor density is 8.5. That means it is lighter than air. I already told you it is alkaline in nature and it is liquefied at 10 degrees Celsius by compressing it at 6 atmosphere pressure. It can easily turn into a liquid. And the boiling point of liquid ammonia is minus 33.5 degrees Celsius. The freezing point means ammonia will turn into a solid at minus 77.7 .7 degrees Celsius. So that is also the melting point. And uh, solubility, it is highly soluble in water. One volume of water dissolves about 702 volumes of ammonia at 20 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. That means the normal pressure. Okay, now next we move on to the fountain experiment. It is a similar experiment that uh, we did in the previous chapter that is hydrogen chloride if you remember. So this is your first assignment, first and only assignment for today. You will write down and draw the fountain experiment in your copies okay so the fountain experiment is to demonstrate the high solubility of ammonia gas in water so it is similar to um, you know uh, to demonstrate the uh, high solubility of hydrogen chloride gas in water it is similar but there is a slight difference in the solution that we use in the beaker so since ammonia is alkaline and hydrogen chloride is acidic gas so what do we take we take a round bottom flask and this round bottom flask is filled with ammonia gas so here you can see the mouth of the flask is fitted here the mouth is fitted with a rubber stopper and then it has two holes one for the jet tube this is the jet tube which goes rises up with a very thin mouth at the top okay and uh, the other for a dropper so another dropper is here and here inside the dropper what is there water is there so
so there is a trough containing red litmus paper into which the jet tube is dipping in then there is a stand this is the stand to fix the round bottom flask in an inverted so this is the stand the round bottom flask you can see is fitted in an inverted position so you know the procedure this dropper must be squeezed so inside this dropper water is there so one drop of water will move up here so when one drop of water moves here ammonia gas will be immediately dissolved in this one drop of water and then some space is created inside the round bottom flask and what is sucked in red litmus solution is sucked in and then it comes out as a blue fountain why because ammonia gas is here and ammonia is alkaline and it turns red litmus blue okay so remember children a bottle of liquor ammonia you know liquor ammonia is ammonia which is dissolved in water it should be opened very carefully by cooling it in ice or cold water because inside the bottle of ammonia there is very high pressure and when it is cooled the pressure drops because if there is lots of pressure and when you open the cap of the container what will happen the there will be sudden flushing out of the gases so when it is cooled the pressure will come down and then it prevents the sudden flushing out of the gas so in the next upload we will talk about the chemical properties of ammonia so we will stop here today till then children stay safe god bless you